what's going on. And, and it's your boy, Lynn Scooter. Today, we have a champion saying goodbyes in NXT, and a title match is set in AEW. More after this intro. That's tag shit. Free fall as I die through the kaleidoscope in my mind. No rope up to climb. Gotta remind myself that I'm fine. Mama, I don't really want to. How y'all doing today? It's once again, let them scooter right represent that T A G the Almighty. And you know, I'm here to bring you this extended edition of quick today you know currently my internet situation is a little catty won't as one might say so you know i had to kind of bring you both i'm here to bring you both nxt and uh dynamite you know kind of like how we used to do back in the day with tag if if y'all was with us those uh if y'all was with us those early days when we used to review both shows back when it was the Wednesday Night Wars, you know. I'm kind of kind of throwing it back slightly, but let's get into it. Y'all remember, I did a previous video that basically talked about the WWE draft. It, I broke it down to who's going where and, you know, the, 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 the roster changes take effect after back last Saturday. So basically starting Sunday, or in this case, Monday, the rosters are set. You know, there were some NXT call-ups. Andy Hartwell, uh, Isla Dawn, Alba Fire, Katana Chance, Caden Carter, uh, JD Madonna, Apollo Crews, Zoe Stark, excuse me, uh, Grayson Waller, Vaughn Wagner is a floater, our free agent, you got Odyssey Jones, and I think that was all that were drafted. Yeah. So starting off the night, North American Championship, Wesley defending against Drew Gulak. So Drew Gulak was under the guise of, hey, Wesley has been defending this belt constantly, constantly and constantly. He's going to get tired. At some point, maybe this is some point. So, not bad thinking. If you truly think about it, not bad thinking. But will it work out? We'll see. Uh, of course, you know, Drew Gulag has Charlie Dempsey by his side. So, oh my God, I just forgot. Tyler Bate then decided that, hey, let me be your backup, Wes, just in case Dempsey gets involved. It'll be fair. And it was fair, but the cardiac kid with the cardiac kick retains. Uh, what's next for Wes? We don't know. Maybe uh, Tyler Bate might slide on in there and be like, hey, your fam, let me get a shot of that belt, homie. But that man has been defending that title. Like, I'm pretty sure at this point, I, if they didn't announce it Tuesday, I'm pretty sure he's defended that title the most out of almost any champion in NXT. Because, yeah, Wes has been that dude. Uh, we had Trick Williams come to the ring. He's upset that Braun Breaker pulled the shenanigans he pulled. So he was like, you know, Melo still in the hospital. But don't worry, it's still Trick Melo gang. You know, Mello's my brother. We went to the same high school. You know, since high school, we've been friends. We've been brothers. And, you know, that's my ride or die. I ain't appreciate what Braun did. So, Braun, knuckle up. Come out here. Let's knuckle up. Let's do it. He comes out and, you know, he challenged him to a match next week. He was like, you know, let's do this, Braun, you know. Me, you, next week, one-on-one. -on -one. And Breaker was like, all right. And he basically told Trick that, hey, the way I'm going to do you next week is an example of how I'm going to do your boy at um, 
Battleground. Uh, I think it's May 28th. Yeah, I know the same night as uh, AEW Devil or nothing. Interesting. But yeah, so we got that set for next week. JD Madonna, Noam Dar had a segment. You know, it's Madonna's last night on NXT. Noam Dar comes to him and was like, hey, I need you to beat up on Dragon Lee. You know, Dragon Lee's been ironed, uh, ironed my heritage cup. Um, out my face, but you keep on, I'm going to take your, uh, your, uh, the Heritage Cup from you, so move around. You're lucky this is my last night here. Then we get to the grudge match, Gigi, jo- Gigi Dolan, JC Jane. I feel like there should have been more to this. Like, it should have been some type of stipulation, something. I don't know. Uh, towards the end, oh, also they had the notion of Gigi's brother being there since, you know, JC been popping her trash. And they kind of kept playing into that, you know, every now and then they would fight outside the ring. Uh, JC would be barking at her brother. Gigi would be, you know, high-fiving her brother and things like that. And there was a spot where Gigi threw JC into the steps. I don't know if that's what busted Jane open, but it was something. And then the ending got a little weird because JC went around. Gigi went on one apron. JC ended up pulling her arm into the exposed metal of the turnbuckle. Then she hit her kick. One, two, three. She gets the dub. And it was like, Okay, I can see her getting the dub. Don't get me wrong. It was just the way it went about. It was kind of like, I I guess, cool. And then, you know, she was kind of a bloody mess. You know, she was still barking at uh, Gigi's brother. I want to say his name was Miles. And, yeah, it's kind of a little flat. Then we get Axiom versus Scripps. The caveat to this match was somebody was going to get exposed. It was really scripts talking about he was going to expose Axiom, but Axiom, they had a little okay match. He gets golden ratio kick, one, two, three, fights over. Axiom tries to go, you know, show some sportsmanship, sportsmanship, two scripts. Scripts tried to flip the script, and he talked, he took another L. And then Axiom pulled his mask off, and boom, Scripps is not exposed. I mean, of course, we all know it's Reggie, but I don't know now. Is he going to just start competing maskless now or what? But Scripps. Uh, Jensen, Briggs, and Henley had a segment where, you know, Jensen was still being apologetic about, you know, the thing he, he done with Kiana and blah, 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 blah. And they was like, Brooks, chill. You're like our brother. It, bro, family fight. It's all good in the hood, baby. Uh, and then he was like, you know, uh, Kiana, your bar is on premium land that, you know, you're not take, using all of it. So maybe if you sell a piece of it and blah, 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 you know, it will help your parents, you know, pay for the bar outright and, you know, they can have money to where they could relax and this and this. And they was like, and, was, and then, you know, they was like, okay, wow, you did grow up some and you did learn some stuff from Kiana. And then, you know, even some women was like, hey, you know, you want to get a drink with us? He was like, nah, you know, I'm trying to catch up with my people. And they was like, okay, Brooks, look at him growing up in front of our eyes. And it was like, that was a very roundabout way to get here. <laughs> but, we got here. Uh, Dragon Lee, JD, Madonna. Once again, Madonna's final match in NXT. Um, it wasn't a bad match. Uh, Noam Dar comes out with the Heritage Cup, you know, to kind of pick fun and, you know, his own brand of taking notes and whatever. Uh, it wasn't a bad match. It was just, um, I'm not going to lie. 
surprised. I was surprised that Madonna got the W. Because, you know, normally with final nights, especially with them still building up Dragon Lee, I would have thought Dragon Lee would have got the W, especially going into wanting to challenge Noam Dar for the Heritage Cup. But yeah, Madonna gets the W. So good on you, Madonna. Uh, Joe Gacy, Joe Coffey. The caveat to this match is if Gacy wins, Dyad gets a shot at the tag team titles. Back and forth match. Of course, shenanigans was going to ensue. Um, Joe Gacy gets the dub. Dyad gets a tag team title shot next week. Uh, Danny Palmer, her debut versus Tatum Paxley. Danny Palmer, um, you could definitely tell when Soul Hooker comes back they're going to have them intertwined. I don't know if they're going to have them necessarily as a tag team, but they're going to definitely have them as like the besties because her outfit and almost her style is very reminiscent of Souls. Like, I don't know if she is as athletic as Soul, but definitely um, you can see the similarities in style. Um, but like I said, Danny Palmer's uh, debut, she gets the dub. I forgot what, oh, I think her finisher was like a frog splash. But she gets the dub. Um, we get a Chase U segment where Mr. Chase is still beat up from his match with Braun Breaker last week. And Duke was like, well, I'll teach the class. So Duke starts to do his little thing. And he's like, tear up the quizzes. There'll be no more quizzes. And then he had the people start chanting Duke. No, he saw the people start chanting Chase you, Chase you like that. And then he was like, hmm, Duke you. That has a nice little ring to it. So, hmm, hmm, maybe, maybe the schism couldn't take Chase you. Maybe it might be Duke Hudson that takes uh, Chase you. Hmm. There was a segment with Von Wagner because, you know, Von Wagner trying to open up more to Mr. Stone and, you know, them announcing that him being a free agent and whatever. Um, the main event match, Alba Fire, uh, Isla Dawn versus Caden and Katana for the Women's Tag Team Championships. Uh, Caden and Katana was drafted to Raw. Isla and Alba was drafted to SmackDown. And the caveat was, is when who's going to take the belts when? Uh, all in all, it led to uh, Fire and Dawn retaining. Um, so I guess it's one of the things to where now we have to see is the women's tag team championships originally going to be like it was. Like at some point, is there going to be a uh, Alba Fire? Isla Dawn versus Raquel and Liv to determine who's going to be the undisputed women tag champs. So that way the belts can properly be defended between Raw, SmackDown, and NXT like how it was supposed to be originally. Bars. Bars. I don't know if you caught it. Bars. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so Fire and Dawn retains. Then the main event segment Andy comes out, you know, rocking the cast on the ankle. And basically, she's saying her goodbye. She was like, you know, my time in NXT, it was, it was, it was great, you know, all the ups, the downs, everything, you know, never what I thought I would have been champion. And now, you know, I'm going into the unknown of being uh on Raw. And I I basically she's like, I can't wait to see what happens. And then, you know, per that, she relinquishes the women's championship. She says that um, starting next week, there will be a women's tournament, and the finals will be at a uh, battleground. Not battleground. Yeah, battleground. It will be a battleground to determine who is going to be the new NXT women's champion. And then she was like, well, uh, now i got to figure out how to get out this ring. And then right when she was getting to the ropes, Dexter comes sliding out and he's like, yeah. So he carries Indy out and we get the final image of Indy 
you know, being carried out by Dexter, waving to the fans and everything. And it was like, yeah, yeah. Then it goes back to the ring. Then we see someone picking up the women's championship. It was Tiffany Stratton. And as she's picking it up, you see another arm grabbing it. And it was Cora Jade. They're tug of warring over the belt. Roxanne comes in, clothesline to both of them. Then you just see the women's locker room basically just empty out. And it just leads to a whole women's scuffle, a whole brawl. So we'll see come Tuesday how this women's tournament is supposed to go, how it's supposed to operate, who all is in it, all of the above. But yeah, that was NXT. And, you know, starting Sunday, we get to see some shakeups. We get to see some new faces from NXT on Raw and SmackDown. And then now we get to see some of the other superstars kind of come into their own a little bit more in NXT. So, yeah. Next up, we getting into last night's AEW Dynamite. And before we get into AEW Dynamite, because coincidentally, one of the champions is in the video. I need y'all to check out my brother and arms lip dizzle's video dealing with AEW's titles. And coincidentally, a lot of things tonight had to deal with title matches and titles and things like that. So very apropos. <laughs> so and here we go. It opens up Orange Cassidy, the international champion. Bandito with the luscious. I, Bandito got some luscious hair. Luscious. I'm talking by luscious. Uh, <laughs> Roger Strong and Adam Cole versus the JASs, uh, Matt Menard, Angelo Parker, Danny Garcia, Matt Hager. Uh, <laughs> Uh, this was a very chaotic match and almost a chaotic way to start. You had Jericho on commentary. You know, he's popping shit, talking about, you know, funny enough, he comes out there wearing the Britt Baker shirt, the image of her with the black eye, and, you know, the one the social outcast wore to kind of uh, mock Britt. And he comes out wearing it, and it's like, ooh. Bold strategy, Chris. See if it pays off for you. But, uh, yeah, so he's on commentary. This match was very chaotic. Um, ultimately, I don't know how I feel about it. Like, it was good to see Roddy, you know, the Roddy getting his feeling, you know, let, reminding the people why he's the messiah of the backbreaker. But it was very chaotic start, and it was a very chaotic match that ultimately it leads to Cassidy, Bandito, Cole, and Strong getting the dub. And as soon as they got the dub, uh, Cole runs straight up to Jericho. And I do happen to like this scene because it felt like Jericho didn't know it was supposed to happen or he wasn't paying attention that it was supposed to happen because as he's still trying to talk and kind of go over the replays of the match, that's when Cole pops up and like even push, knocks him through the set, parts of the set and everything. Like he and you know they escorted him out and you know um Britt walks up on him and slaps him in the face a few times and things like that. But yeah. Um then we get a great promo by the BCC, uh mainly Danielson and Moxley. Danielson talking about how basically he's the best professional wrestler in the world. You know, he was like, yeah, that guy who said he was the best there is, best there was, and best there ever will be. I'm better than him. Uh, he was like, I want a guy like, I want this little shit Yuta to be better than me and blah, blah, blah. And then we get Moxley, and Moxley's like, hey, you know, I'm going to beat Kenny's ass in that cage. You know, I guess in so much of a roundabout way, I'm going to beat his ass in that cage. Like, it's going down. Like, I'm going to beat his ass in that cage match next week. 
And speaking of the outcast, we get Soraya of the social outcast versus Willow. Um, Soraya gets the dub. Uh, after that, they try to jump Willow, and then she does music hits. She comes out. She's like, nah, I'm joining the outcast. So they give her the spray paint. And when they give her the spray paint from the way they're standing in the ring, Britt and Hater sneaks in and stands behind the other two outcasts. And then she just sprays the green spray paint. I want to say it was in Soraya's face. And then Hater and Baker attacks Storm and Soho. And then it leads to them getting the at least to them getting beating them down. And then they lined up on the ground and hate her. I hate her, sorry. She the spray paints on them. So now we know we at least got Sheeta on the sides of the originals. Uh House of Black. House of Black basically says, you know, we're doing a if anybody really wants a shot at these trio championships, they're going to have to abide by the rules. And I want to say they call it the house rules or the something rules. I cannot remember. But basically, it's like no rope breaks, 20 second count outs. Um, there was other little caveats to it. And it was like, so if any team feels they want that smoke and you want to abide by these rules, Let's go. And funny enough, it leads into a trios battle royal. I don't remember all the trios that was in it, but the acclaim gets to do it. So the acclaim will at some point be going against the House of Black. That's going to be interesting. That's going to be an interesting uh, matchup, personally speaking. Um, MJF, Sammy Guevara, sorry, for earlier, we had a segment with Darby and Jungle Man. They were talking about how, you know, we know we don't like each other, but we got to work together so that way we can be added to the match. And that way, you know, hopefully one of us two walks out as world champ, blah, 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 so forth and so on. Fast forward, we get MJF and Sammy. They basically make up in a sense. They make up and they're like, oh, we're all best friends again and blah, 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 blah. So call on the same page. We get Kenny O and Don Callis, and Don Callis is like, look, I ain't forget what y'all did to me, you know. Your boy got this scar, man. I ain't forgetting him. Basically, Kenny O was basically letting Moxley know, I'm going to beat your ass in that cage, man. I am going to beat that ass in thine cage. And I hope you're ready for it, Mox. Um... Then we get Wardlow versus some poor individual. Uh, then after that, Christian and Luchasaurus comes out, and we get a swerve because Christian was like, "You ain't got to worry about Luchasaurus uh, challenging you, Wardlow. It's gonna be me." And it was like, "Huh, interesting." So Christian, I guess, wants that TNT championship, which. Oh no! Should just let it be Luchasaurus, especially since he's back and spookier than ever. Like I get it, I guess, but we're here. <laughs> then we get uh the Lethal Gang, Jay Lethal, Jeff Jarrett, Santam Singh, and uh Son Jay Dutt. They go to uh Jay, sorry Mark Briscoe rest in peace Jay. They go to Mark Briscoe's uh house and they're all Santum and Santum and Sanjay are dressed in overalls. It, it was, especially it's wild seeing Santum with him being seven two. But they start doing stuff around the farm and things like that. And then Papa Briscoe comes and he was like, who in the hell are all these people? As a matter of fact, you need to watch out for the one in the coveralls. He was like, which one? Both of them. So, and from that, Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal officially challenges FTR to a tag team title match at Double or Nothing because they're taking the approach of, hey, 
we each beat a member of FTR, so we should be able to beat them as a tag team and get them belts, fam. We shall see. We get absolute Ricky Starks and we get rock hard Juice Robinson of the Bang Bang Gang, aka Bullet Club Gold. Um, I don't know. I need to see where this is all going to go. Because I'm not saying the feud has gotten stale. It's just something's missing. I don't know what it is with this. Ultimately, Starks gets the dub. And then after that, uh, Switchblade comes out and beats up on uh, Starks. And they said Spears was not in attendance because I guess he got beat up from, on Rampage. But I don't know how I feel about this feud overall, personally. I really don't. Then um, we get the main event, uh, the four pillars tag match, MJF, Sammy G, Darby, and Jungle Man. Now, before the match, after uh, Sammy G and Jungle Man have a final powwow, uh, Darby leaves, MJF sneaks in, and he's like, look, Jungle Man, I just need you to be with me. Be with your boy. Like, I think we could even be cool people. You just gotta be with your boy. And he was like, look, just take the L, then you could just be by my side at the throne. Jungle Man was like, fuck out of here, fam. And he leaves, but Darby sees Jump, uh, MJF leaving, so now he's like, oh, so I can't trust Jungle Man now. And I'm pretty sure some of y'all who are new here probably wonder why y'all, why it's like, why are you calling him Jungle Man? Well, if I had the image, I would put it up there. There was an image that showed when Jungle Boy was kissing Anna J, his girlfriend, and Anna J had on some leather pants. And where Jungle Boy hand was, he was gripping her leather pants, and you could see the grip. So we was like, oh, that ain't Jungle Boy no more. That's Jungle Man, and he grips leather. So if you hear her say, if you hear us calling him Jungle Man and mentioning about gripping leather. But yeah, so now we get to the match. Jungle Man, Darby Allen. Sorry, it's actually kind of funny when you kind of hear it back a little bit. And like how an inside joke just turns into like a thing. Because like it sounded weird, me calling him Jungle Boy. But Jungle Man, Darby Allen, MJF, Sammy G. Uh, and the caveat to this is if Jungle Man and Darby wins, they get added to the main event at Double or Nothing. They'll end up being a fatal four way rather than just. MJF and Sammy G. Uh, it was a match. I mean, it was pretty predictable how it was going to happen and what was going to happen. But during the process, Darby felt he couldn't trust Sammy. So there was time. Sorry. Darby realized he couldn't trust Jack. So there was times where Jack and Darby were a little standoffish towards each other, but they were still tagging or tagging themselves in. They slowly start to see the dissension between Sammy and MJF because they basically wanted to be the glory hogs in the match. Ultimately, it led to Sammy getting tired of this. He hits MJF. Eventually, um, Jungle Boy hits. I forgot what move he hit, but Darby tagged himself in. And Jungle Boy was trying to pin, but realized the ref was telling him, hey, hey, you're not legal. Wow, Darby is coming off the top rope with the coffin drop, and Jungle Man had to hurry up and move. Blah, MJF is hit with the coffin drop. One, two, three. Uh, Jungle Man, Sammy G. Sorry, Jungle Man and Darby are now added. So now it is a four pillars, fatal four way for the. Um, AEW Championship. And that was Dynamite. And once again, you know, just a little throwback because of the way my technology is right now that I, you know, 
Put it back for the one time. Uh, NXT, AEW on the same show. Shout outs to my brethren, Lip Dizzle, Jaeger Bombastic, Juggernaut 097. Uh, we got Backlash this Saturday. Lip Dizzle's Prediction Championship, which that's our little thing. If you're new here, we, we do predictions for pay per views and we have a title. And whoever comes out the winner, you know, gets that title. Hence my name, Le Fiv, is because I had five, 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 five title reigns. Five, 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 five title reigns. And I'm looking for six, you know. If it's not double, I'm sorry. If it's not backlash, then it might be double or nothing slash. Actually, that whole weekend, because that whole weekend would be Night of Champions, double or nothing, and uh, uh, NXT Battleground. So I'm trying to get that belt back so I can have my six ring. But We'll see how it goes this weekend. You know what I'm saying? We'll see if Dizzle uh, rem- uh, holds that title, retains, or we'll see if one of the other three gets it. But thank you for tuning in. Whether you loved it or hate it, don't forget to rate it. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Perfectly thumbs up. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Tag that notification bell so you know when we post new videos. Thank y'all for tuning in. And whether you're new here, whether you're returning here, one thing we love to do, we love to hit y'all with that sign out, and we love to hit you with that too sweet. So, you know, go ahead and warm it up. Go ahead and warm it up. Thank y'all for tuning in, and good people like that. Do not forget to tag out. Peace.